Hi there everybody and welcome back. In this video tutorial I'm going to teach you how to draw skeletal formula molecules starting from displayed formula molecules. So I'm going to give you all the tricks you need to make sure that your skeletal structures save you lots of time in the exam and that they're drawn with excellent precision. I'm going to look at what happens when we introduce other functional groups and take a little peek at how we represent stereoisomerism in alkenes using skeletal formula. If you find this video helpful, I really would appreciate it if you could give it a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. So we're going to start off here with a first example using propane. Propane is a three carbon aliphatic structure and I'm numbering the carbons out here so you can see exactly where I'm going and I'll do this on the skeletal too. So for the skeletal structure, pen hits the page, that's the first carbon. Up to the second, down to the third. So that's every end of every line and every corner in the line that I draw represents a carbon atom. So that's one, two, three, just there like that. We don't show any CH bonds, but that doesn't mean we don't show any hydrogens ever. We are going to show hydrogen connected to other atoms like oxygen or nitrogen. And the only time when the end of a line isn't a carbon atom is when we can clearly see a different atom at the end of one of the lines, like we'll see in the propan 2 wall example in a moment. So with this second example, propan 2 wall I've still got a three carbon chain, which I'll number out nice and clearly for you. One, two, three. But this time on carbon number two, I appear to have an alcohol group, which is the OH functional group. So I'm gonna draw my skeletal three carbon chain first. And then on carbon number two, I'm now gonna draw another line out of that carbon connecting to an oxygen. And because I'm showing an oxygen at the end of the line, I know there's no carbon there. I'm then going to show the hydrogen connected to the oxygen, just listing it next to it, because I do show hydrogens that are connected to atoms that aren't carbon when I do skeletal structure. A couple of finer points about this one. Your bond connectivity has got to be clear. Make sure the carbon labelled number two is clearly bonded to the oxygen of the OH group. It's very important to keep an eye on what we call bond connectivity. And I often get asked, is there a carbon atom at the end of that line before the oxygen? No, I've shown an oxygen there at the end of the line so you can be sure there's no carbon there. There's still only the three I labeled up. So this next example is 1-bromo-butuene. We're going to stick to my general rule that in order to draw skeletal, every end of every line and every corner in the line represents a carbon atom. And so here to get started with are my 1, 2, 3, 4 carbon atoms. And then I put everything else on. For example, on carbon 1, I've got a bromine. So a line from carbon 1 straight to a bromine. I've not introduced any extra carbon atoms because I've got a bromine at the end of that line. Between carbons two and three, and from the name of the structure, you will have seen that we've got an alkene functional group. I represent this double bond with a double line between carbons two and three. There we go. You should normally make it connect at one end. Now I have actually drawn here this structure in its E and its trans stereoisomer orientation. For more about EZ and cis-trans isomerism, there's a little video you can watch by clicking the I in the top right-hand corner of the screen. For the fourth and final example, you are not expected to be able to name this structure as part of your A-level in chemistry. I'm still going to put numbers on the carbons, but I'm not labeling up the longest continuous carbon chain this time, which I would then use to name my structure. The important thing about this molecule though is, we've now got a cyclic ring, so it's alicyclic, and I've got a carboxylic acid group on carbon number one. So I've got to be careful how I draw that. 
bond connectivity is going to be very important. So I'm going to draw out all of my carbons and I'm going to number them up again to make it really clear. One, two, three and four. So you can see exactly where they are. And look, that little triangle of them, the two, three and the four is literally a triangle. On carbon one, I now show a bond going out, a single bond to an oxygen, which has an H on it. And then a double bond, which is connected to the original carbon number one or just around it, a double bond up to an oxygen. Make sure that bond connectivity is clear and to the correct atoms. I'm going to redraw this one again in just brackets here so you can see it more clearly. But that's all it takes. Every end of every line and every corner in the line represents a carbon atom unless you show a different atom at the end of the line. I hope this gives you a really clear set of rules that you can follow when drawing your skeletal structures in organic chemistry. And until next time, happy revising.